Hi everybody. This is Patty, the Tinkerer's wife, here in my garden in Portland, Oregon at Tinkerer's Paradise. Welcome to my channel. For those of you who are new, I want to welcome you. Um, and would you please subscribe and all of you, before you leave, please hit that like button. That is one way you can help support this channel and also let YouTube know that these type of videos are valuable and worth uh, sharing. So I just want to ask you to do that. Those are simple things. Um, but also hang around and I'll take you on a tour. And I've got a special thing at the end. I'm going to show you how to grow mint without it getting out of bounds. This is a trick I learned years ago. So hang on. That'll be near the end. Okay, here we are. Those of you who have not seen this view, these are the garden boxes. I came up with this design and the tinkerer who is great at fixing things is also great at building things. So he figured out how to uh, construct these. We actually, it's kind of a spin-off from, I think it was Justin Rhodes' um, father-in-law. <laughs> who is a um, engineer down in Florida. He made the hurricane proof boxes. Well, these are um, the tinkerer's version of those boxes. So um, this is reclaimed metal from an old mink farm here in our region. Um, so yeah, they actually do have some reclaimed stuff. Unfortunately, I didn't get the cedar I wanted. That was the tinkerer's decision, not mine. But they will last a long time, and there is no soil up against the uh, boxes themselves. So that was, that was a good thing. That was the only reason I didn't kick up a fuss. So anyhow, let's get back to this. Um, little garden tour. I haven't done one in a while, so I thought I'd catch you guys up. We have cucumbers that are climbing now, and we actually have some little babies coming on here. I'm not going to go through the proud mama thing where you got to show everybody the fruit, but a um, couple things I do want to show you here. One of my favorite things is this guy right here. And let's see if it'll, can you see how soft that is? I'm trying to get it. I'm going to have to go down here. I think it does it better down here. Let's see. Let's go right there. There we go. That's a velvet. Now this is a Baker Creek variety. I got a lot of my plants from Baker Creek, the seeds anyway. It is purple shine eggplant. Um, I'm looking forward to these eggplant. We love eggplant at our house. So we've been eating a fair, not a fair amount, but we've been getting some fruit off of this other one that I bought because oops, it has variegated leaves <laughs> sometimes. Uh, some of the leaves are coming out variegated like that one right there. You can see it. Yeah. So anyway, um, and we've gotten, we've already gotten three or four fruit off of this one. It's really starting to come on. Uh, the plants in these beds, this particular, um, cannot talk. The Solanaceae plants like the soil that we got. Some of the other ones, not so much, and you'll see that, and I'll probably point it out, but I'm not going to complain about it. It's just something we got to figure out here. And that's what happens when you bring in soil, like we had to do. Uh, we garden under fir trees, those of you that are new. Uh, so it's a little challenging. This is Mary's Niagara ground cherry, supposed to be one that is more cold hardy. That, that guy right there at the base, where's my finger? There it is. That is a ground cherry that's ready. Uh, they turn kind of a wheat color, fall to the ground. The husks act as a little wrapper, peel back the wrapper and you can bite off the fruit inside. It's really great garden candy. Now we've gotten about four or five squash off of the Ron Denise. Uh, it kind of took a little rest and now it's got some more that it's producing. I'm really happy about that. If you ever grow these little zucchini like this, this is a zucchini. Um, I would recommend that if you want to eat them fresh, you harvest them at a pound. So that's going to be like softball size. Um, and then you can let them get to two, two and a half pounds before they start getting very seedy. That works really good for sauteing. Uh, you can let them get a little bigger and make little bowls out of them and stuff them, which is fun. Um, 
I do that make an Italian mixture you can do an Asian mixture of meats in there sausage with um, sausage with uh, lemongrass and uh, ginger things like that garlic uh, for the Asian one uh, throw in it you know dress it with a little lime juice anyway um, got a zinnia here that's actually gonna bloom I was wondering about those my habanadas which are just barely starting to bloom so we're supposed to have some warm so uh, warm weather coming up here again uh, actually we've been having it off and on but we have rain coming in tomorrow I'm happy for the showers they do help with watering um, I've got some carrots over there I can't remember what variety that one is um, but I've got kale here now these kale have been in here I've got to tell you guys these have been in here two months so yes we have some issues with the soil we have to figure out I'm only showing you this because I want you to know that it it's never perfect even if you think well I got three-way mix it's got a big amount of compost and it should grow great which was exactly my thought and it felt like great soil turned out to not be and so we're having issues that we're having to uh, rectify and that's okay now one of my goals was to have vines climbing on the trellises you know Jess and her famous trellises well I have things climbing oh hello little hummingbird go ahead and get something to drink yes thank you for joining us yep we have um <laughs> i know he's not very happy he's like you're too close to my food oh here are we gonna have we're gonna have a fight sometimes we have a little aerial battles there might be a pair oh that's a female so that's probably a pair the males will let the females in the ma other males will chase off other males um, they act like there's not going to be enough food i think it's pretty funny um, that's an aspect feeder. I will be doing a review on those. The next time I go to clean them, I'll show you what I do, how I make the food, and that kind of thing. So maybe next week. I, do them, I clean them and do it about every 10 days to two weeks, uh, depending on how hot it is. And I kind of look to see if there's like bugs that have gotten in. Uh, they do have a moat, and I'll show you that all that later. But anyway, uh, this is the Triofino... triofino Violetto, uh, a little Italian bean, very nice little snap bean. Um, I harvest those young before they start getting big seeds in them because they're just nice and tasty that way, nice and tender. All right, um, this is the Badger Flame Beet, and I am praying <laughs> that these will actually bulb up at some point or I'll have some kind of a root that I can taste. Um, I do have seeds that I can sow for next year um, but well it's another soil issue. I'm not going to go into soil issues now. I'll probably do a full-on video about the soil and what I did later but I want to show you the produce. This is a Mr. Ben's tomato and oops, last year he brought home a poor little tomato from a liquidation store had no idea what it was we already had a lot of tomatoes but he decided that he wanted to grow one you know he's he's kind of a, a guy that rescues things I gotta say he is he's a guy that rescues things and it's been doing really well um, so we did have something eat this I don't know if you can see that right there we had something eating it yeah, so anyway, oh, let me explain. I've got like metal stuff in here. Um, I actually have used these for decoration in the garden. That's actually project metal. Um, I do have more over here. <laughs> you can see I was cleaning this out yesterday. It was had blackberry vines growing in all kinds of weeds. So I got in there and pulled stuff out. Um, and now I have to figure out what I'm going to do with all of it and some of it I'm going to sell some of it like these little chairs here I'm going to paint those up and probably sell those for somebody else can take them home and love them uh, That's kind of why I got them anyway. They're not my style a little too frilly um, But yeah, so that's what that's all about. Let's get back here to the tomatoes This is Brad's atomic grape. I want to show you this one over here This is just barely starting to get color on it it 
it's a, actually more like a paste tomato. Um, it's a big, honking, heavy, meaty tomato. So I'm looking forward to that one. Um, this tomato here, that is Alex's tomato from next door. It was an unknown heirloom variety that really was a nice tomato. And this over here, that is uh, summer wine, or vintage wine, excuse me, M.I. Gardner, Luke, or M.I. Gardner, that's one of his offerings. Um, and I'm looking forward to that one. If you don't know Luke over at M.I. Gardner, check out his YouTube and check out um, his seeds and his shop. Um, really great guy, really good service. Uh, just a, a sweet man and also a really good educator when it comes to gardening. Um, I just want to share that with you real quick. Um, also show you what is happening with this. Um, I noticed that we're starting to get mildew. That's not a good thing. I really, yeah. This could be because of the excess moisture. It could be because it's in here and not getting the air circulation it needs. Um, we normally have really dry summers here. I know, it's Portland, right? Doesn't it rain all the time? No, it does not. From July 5th, usually until in October when it starts getting regular rains, we don't have hardly any measurable rainfall. This year's been a little different. Um, these are gonna get planted in a different place next year, but they look very, I mean, they look so pretty in there. Look at, that's Burgarten, that's Tricolor, or excuse me, Icterina, which is the gold variegated sage. That's the purple leaved one. That's lemon verbena for those of you who hadn't seen that one yet. And I go over here, we have the rhubarbs doing really good in those containers. If you, um, you know, they talk about kiddie pools. Well, those little containers work really good here. Oh, I want to show you this, and I've got to go over here to do it. That is Barry's Crazy Cherry. And it is a multiflora, so you can get like up to 32 fruit. I don't know that we're going to get 32 there, but there's fruit there. The um, green zebra is starting to ripen up. It will be, we will harvest it before it turns yellow. It, it'll be green with more of a white stripe, but we don't wait until it gets yellow because we like the more acidic flavor that the greener tomato has. It's a little too musky for us when it ripens fully. Um, red brandy wine is doing really nicely. Um, I don't know how much fruit we're going to get off of that one. Um, then we've got the good old classic beefsteak. You know, people say we can't grow beefsteak tomatoes here, but we can. You just got to know what you're doing. The nice thing about these here is I will be able to cover them to some degree uh, with some plastic if it's a little too cold later so we can get them to um, ripen. This is Dr. Weichies or Dr. Witches. Weichies? Dr. Weichies is a lot easier to say. Thank you, Jess Soward. <laughs> Those of you who know Roots and Refuge and Jess and Maya, you know that you know the struggle. Uh, this is Red Samurai Carrot in here. Um, the tree spinach here, this is related to lamb's ear. Those of you who haven't seen it, very pretty. The new growth is very pretty. Um, I did notice that after I pruned it this last time, this one came out not so brightly colored. So that's kind of interesting. This one's still brightly colored. Also, this one did the same thing. So it could be time of year on those. I'm not sure. I do have one conundrum in here that I don't know the answer to. I have never grown runner beans that don't produce beans. But my runner beans, these are the gold ones, so far have not produced a bean. Now I've had several flowers on these and I've even had groups of flowers and I've got a spider that keeps wanting to, there he is, hello little spider, hello. Um, anyway, that's just not so cool. <laughs> just don't like it. Um, anyway. I, if you know why they don't produce flowers, if there's any bug or nutrient deficiency, please let me know. They obviously are not growing like a lot, so I, 
I don't know if it's pH of the soil. I really don't know. I know the pH of our soil is around 7, 7.5, even up to 8 in spots. Yeah, I know. That's part of the conundrum we're dealing with. i got to get that fixed. Um, another growing slowly is this. And honestly, this is a shrub, so I guess I should kind of expect that because this is Okinawa spinach. Um, it has grown some. I won't say that it hasn't grown at all. But it's growing slower than I would have liked it. But first year, maybe it's just me. The uh, This is perpetual chard. I've noticed um, leaf curl on it. I'm not sure why that is. Not getting big leaves on it like normal chard. So, uh, you know, it is what it is. And then over here, I've got oka. And oka is a tuberous rooted plant. It's an oxalis. And the tubers will be a very bright version of this color here. So they're like a raspberry color. It's like finding little gems in the soil. It is really, really cool. I love them. So if you've got kiddos, they're really good. Now you can eat them fresh or cooked. They're really good sliced up in a salad. Um, I've even just eaten them, you know, just like a little, um, I don't want to say, like a little carrot, only they're not a carrot, they're definitely a tuber. They get about, well, I've had some that have gotten that big. Um, but, and they actually have wintered over for me here, as long as the soil's fast draining, I can take them and, and put them in potting soil and stick them out um, under cover in an area that stays relatively moderate, which this year will have one of those areas. Um, most of you have noticed that we have a cover over our walkway. Um, I will be doing a full-on reveal about what we're going to do with that space um, and maybe maybe have the tinkerer show us the back of his head or something and have him talk a little bit about it. Well, look at this. Look at all those flowers that were blooming. Now this guy just kind of stopped, so I'm thinking it slowed down. Okay, oh, did I show you this? I don't think I did. This was uh, rat tail radish that the stems got long and lanky and falling over, so I clipped them off and I'm getting new ones. This is what you can do with this plant to keep it going. So rat tail radish has very spicy pods that are really good for dipping. So grow some rat tail radish and surprise your, the people when you have a, a relish tray next time. The purple jalapeno. Um, this is Oro's Campoyo. I've gotten one off of this so far. Um, this is the orange or the pumpkin spice jalapeno. Um, this is not a pino, which might end up being a little spicy pino. <laughs> I know. <laughs> uh, Lucha or paprika, which I'm hoping that will grow really nice and lovely for us. I want to make my own paprika, but I'll be happy even if I just get to taste the pepper. A lot of these are new varieties to me. The, uh, the Mira right here, this is a white pepper, sweet pepper, uh, Contro Diosti here, and this one has some really nice flowers. You can see the difference in the size on these. Um, and did I prune this one? Yeah, I did. They were both pruned back at the same time. If you prune your peppers, they get bushier, supposedly. I don't mind. I might have um, punched myself in the nose doing that. But, um, oh, this bean, that's a dragon tongue bean, for those of you who don't know. These are really good. Again, a bean that I would harvest younger. Um, and... Uh, those purple ones that I showed you, they turn dark green like a forest green. This one gets more more of a whitish with little green spots. And then the regular green beans get a nice bright green, so they really are fun to stir fry together. This is celeriac that's doing really well. I'm so happy. Um, this is one of those long to grow crops. you got to wait for this one. And I have something over here that I promised someone that I would feature today. And so here I go. This is 
the Chinese pink celery. I wanted to show you, that's all the bigger those stems are getting. I don't know if they get wider than that. I'm going to do some investigating, uh, but I'm kind of holding off harvesting them to find out. Now, I want to go back over here. I think we've done enough on the garden walk because I promised that I would show you about mint and what I do with mint. Okay. They drink a lot of water, these poor things. Okay. Um, these are your standard nursery pots. And I have chopped the bottoms out of these. These are about a foot deep. And I would sink those into the ground, uh, dig a hole, sink them down into where they're about an inch above the ground. Then um, I would uh, amend the soil before you put it back in. Make sure it's well amended. And plant your mint in the middle of it. And then just keep it moist. When you water, you're probably going to have to watch the water on this one because uh, you don't have water coming in from the side, which is water goes down horizontally, or goes, uh, excuse me, vertically, and it also spreads sideways. And that's how plants stayed watered. Oftentimes, if it only went straight down, you wouldn't get water on a lot of things sometimes because there's those little rain shadows that happen. Uh, but anyway, that's what you want to do with that. You'll get about um, a good year. You might get three to four harvests. Uh, this time of year, you, you might notice there would be a runner that would come out the side. Clip those off. You can put those in, uh, root them in water or stick them in the soil and make a new plant. They will root pretty, pretty readily. Look at this. Isn't this pretty? This is um, Rudbeckia trifoliate, trifoliata, excuse me. Um, very sweet little flower, three feet tall. Um, I'm going to let this go to seed, so I'll have some seeds for it if anybody wants any. Here's its little brother. There's one that didn't bloom. That'll bloom next year. Um, on the mint pots, these are even bigger pots. I don't know what size these are. I don't know if they're a number 10. I guess I could jump them over and find out. There are numbers on the bottom. Eh, I'm not going to find out, I don't think. Well, there we go. Can't see it. Oh well, yeah, I'll look later. Anyway, oh, I want to show off the sunflowers and then I'm going to say goodbye. Maybe I'll say goodbye with the sunflowers. So, this is Patty at Tinker's Paradise. Thank you again for spending time with me. Again, if you're new, please subscribe and uh, all of you, please go ahead and share this. This is Patty the Tinkerer's wife saying God bless and goodbye.